He was a man born to shake nations. He was proud, so much so that the strength of his proud spirit was evident in the movement of his body. He was indeed a warmonger. This record belongs to Jordanes, a Roman bureaucrat and historiographer of Gothic origin who lived in the 6th century. The person mentioned in the text is Attila, the Hun. In fact, these two people never came together. Jordanes was not even born when Attila died. Therefore, he must have written them based on the works of historians like Priscus, who had lived before him and had the opportunity to meet Attila in person. First of all, we have to say that the Huns did not leave any written sources behind. That's why almost all of the records about Attila are made up of works written by his enemies. This means that we have only one window to the life of Attila and the history of the Huns. In short, the figure of Attila we know is based on stories told in disintegrating volumes left behind by his enemies, and in these stories he is often depicted as a feared, cruel, ruthless and a barbaric person. As a result of his notoriety, his enemies call him Flagellum Dei, the Scourge of God. Attila was brought up in a world of great changes. Consider this, for example. About 40 years before Attila was born, the Huns lived in the Central Asian steppes, miles away from the Hungarian plains where Attila was born. Many nations living in the north of the Black Sea at that time, such as the Goths, Vandals, Alans and Suevs, were now dispersed to various parts of Europe. At the root of the change, laid a migration movement. Migration of tribes. Before we start describing Attila's life, let's take a brief look at this migration movement that shaped the world he lived in. The migration of the Huns to Europe is generally thought of a mass movement that took place at once. When you think of migration of tribes, if you think of an image of tens of thousands of Huns advancing from Asia to Europe, you can forget it. In fact, the Hun migration from Central Asia to the interior of Europe took place gradually. Remember, this was not a one-time migration and it was a process that lasted for about 20 years. Considering that the Huns moved with their families and animals, it is not considered possible by the researchers for the road and the surrounding land to feed such large masses. Historians estimate that the size of the migrating groups ranged from 500 to thousand people. The descent of the Huns to the north of the Black Sea and their spread to the Danube border took place gradually after 376. They emerged victorious from most of the conflicts they got into with the peoples living in the region. There were three options for the locals. They would either leave their homeland and save their lives, or die fighting, or surrender and live under the rule of the Huns. Groups that left their homes became part of the migration movement. The Goths were the first group to cross the Roman border. The Gothic tribes became a huge problem for both Eastern and Western Roman empires. In 410, Rome was sacked by the Visigoths led by Alaric. Within 50 years, the Western Roman Empire was shattered. The Visigoths established a state for themselves first in southern France and then in Spain. The Vandals had conquered North Africa and the Franks had conquered Gaul. Britain was already lost. The Roman Empire was like a ghost that had lost its glory and power. Attila was born into such times. We do not know much about Attila's early life. Place and date of birth are still unknown. We probably don't even know what his initial name was. Recent linguistic studies show that the word Attila consists of a combination of the Turkish Atta, meaning ancestor, and the diminutive suffix Illa, and this word may have meant young ancestor. This raises the possibility that the word Attila may have been a later title given to the ruler. Just as in the case of Temuchin, who was given the title of Genghis Khan in the Great Mongolian Congress of 1206. But remember that this is just a theory. 
The origin of the word Attila is still unclear, and linguists continue to come up with different theories about it. Attila was born somewhere in the Hungarian plains between 395 and 410 after Christ. There are a few things we can say for certain about his childhood. Like every Hun child, he learned to ride horses, shoot arrows, use swords and shields from an early age. In addition, we know that Attila spoke Latin, Greek and Gothic languages to a certain extent. It is possible that he learned these in his childhood. If we consider that he is a member of the dynasty, it can be assumed that he received a more special education than other children. Historians think that he married at an early age. His first wife and chief lady was Heraka, a Germanic princess. We know that he had at least three sons, named Ilek, Dengizek and Irnek. Attila's father, Munjuk, was the brother of Oktar and Rua, who jointly ruled the Hun state at the beginning of the 5th century. After Munjuk's death, Attila's uncles raised him. During the Rua and Oktar periods, the Huns had become an important power in Europe. However, it is not easy to estimate how large an area they dominated. Roughly, we can say that they had taken the land extending from the Dnieper river to the north of the Danube, albeit not completely directly. Very few of the people in the region were assimilated by the Huns. Although most of them were affiliated with the Huns, they continued to protect their own identity. For example, the Gepids and Ostrogoths could elect their own kings, although they were obliged to pay taxes and send soldiers to the Huns. After the death of Rua in 434, Attila started to rule the west of the state and his older brother Bleda started to rule the east. Before he died, Rua was preparing to make a peace treaty with the Eastern Roman Empire. Upon his death, Attila himself took on the task of conducting the negotiations. The parties came together in the city of Margos, which is located within the borders of modern-day Serbia. The agreement, which was imposed on the Eastern Roman Empire at the end of the negotiation, was Attila's first political victory. He was able to make Romans pay more tribute. After his political victory at the Peace of Margos, Attila withdrew north with the gold he received from the Romans. With this agreement, Eastern Roman Empire was once again put under pressure. After that, Attila's conquests began to intensify towards the northern and western directions. The Alamans, Burgundians, Ripuar Franks living around the Rhine, Trinks and Saxons who settled further north were forced to submit to the Hun domination, one after another. Around 435, tribes of Finnish and Slavic origin which had settled in the north of the great steppes of Russia were defeated. During this period, the Hun state spread over a huge area stretching from the east of the Don River to the Baltic Sea, from the Rhine to the north of the Black Sea. Shortly after Attila took the throne, he made the state one of the greatest political and military powers of the period. Good relations with the Western Roman Empire were developed during the periods of the previous Hun rulers Uldus and Rua. Attila continued to maintain these good relations. The policy adapted with the Western Roman Empire allowed the Huns to play an important role in the Roman state. Flavius Aetius, a Roman soldier and statesman, owed his position largely to the power of the Huns. When he crossed the Rhine in 435 and subdued the Burgundians, he had auxiliary forces provided by the Huns. Hun cavalry troops also played an important role in the success of Litorius, one of the commanders of the Gaul region, in his war against the Visigoths. Most of the raids made before Attila were aimed at plunder. The Hun troops, which split into small groups, would quickly begin looting the cities and villages in the targeted area, only coming together if an enemy army was dispatched to the area. The preferred goods were valuables that could be easily transported. After collecting as much as gold and silver as they could carry, they would quickly retreat. The aim of such attacks was to avoid conflict as much as possible and to return to the tribal center quickly with the looted goods. Undoubtedly, 
the Huns continued to organize such raids throughout their existence. By the time of Attila, however, they had now attained a tremendous power capable of mustering large armies and besieging large cities. During the time until Attila, the Huns did not know how to use siege tools. However, Attila was able to adapt the siege tools for his army, especially by making use of the engineering knowledge of his Roman captives. He could now set his sights on higher goals. In the spring of the year 440, most of the eastern and western Roman armies were sent to the Mediterranean against the Vandals who were attacking Sicily. In the same year, the Persians, who launched a military operation against Armenia, gave Attila the opportunity he wanted. In the spring of 441, dark clouds began to gather over the Hungarian plains. A storm was about to break out, and the direction of this storm was set towards the Eastern Roman Empire. Attila the Hun was coming.